Throughout history, bananas have been bred into different varieties. They originated in the Malay archipelago and were brought to the Americas in the 15th and 16th centuries. The Gros Michel variety was the most popular by consumers, but another would take its place. In the United Kingdom, the sixth Duke of Devonshire and his botanist would breed a new banana which would take over the world. On May 21, 1790, William Spencer Cavendish was born in Paris and his mother, Lady Georgiana Spencer, brought him to the United Kingdom as an infant. His family called him Hart, an abbreviation of his title, the Marquise of Harding, which he used from his birth until he became Duke. Lady Georgiana had two kids prior to Hart's birth and lived separately from her husband, William Cavendish, the fifth Duke of Devonshire. She struggled with a gambling addiction which led her to having an affair in 1791 to help with a debt, soon after she became pregnant and was exiled to France by her husband. She wasn't expected to survive childbirth and in 1792, Eliza Courtney was born. In order to return home in 1793, Lady Georgiana woefully gave Eliza to the biological father, Charles Grey, the future Prime Minister of the United Kingdom. After nearly two years of abstinence, the two daughters remembered Georgiana, but the three-and-a-half-year-old Hart did not recognize his mother and screamed when she tried to touch him. It later transpired that he was profoundly deaf, the results of an infection he contracted while she was abroad. Lady Georgiana felt so bad for leaving her son, she spoiled him throughout his life, often with fruits. Hart was 16 when his mother died, and his sisters helped fill the void. At the age of 21, Hart became the sixth Duke of Devonshire. From here on out, we're going to refer to him as William Cavendish. William's near deafness as a child did not prevent him from his duties as Duke. William supported the laws of the Catholic Emancipation, the grant of civic and political rights to Catholics supported the Abolition Act of 1807, which stopped the direct purchase of enslaved people from Africa, and William helped reduce factory workers' hours. The Duke had eight homes and over 200,000 acres of land, inspired him to pick up horticultural and gardening interests. He just needed somebody to run the operation. Joseph Paxton was born into a farming family in Bedfordshire in 1803. When Paxton became 14, his older brother John personally trained him as a gardener at Battles Den. He later apprenticed for two or three years to William Griffin, who was famous for his skill in fruit growing. In November of 1823, Paxton was accepted as a student gardener for an experimental garden in Chiswick. He lied to the Horticultural Society of London in his application saying he was born in 1801. The young 20-year-old was promoted to foreman, overseeing 33 acres of land. Within the Horticultural Society, Paxton had some disagreements and was going to leave for America. Cavendish caught wind and came to Chiswick to offer a position to Paxton at his estate in Chatsworth. The Duke is said to have been impressed with Paxton's bearing and general intelligence, but the deciding factor was his good manners. The Duke was quite deaf and Paxton took trouble to speak so that he could hear. The year was 1826 and Paxton went straight to work overlooking the Chatworth estate. Roughly four years later, he came across an imported banana from Mauritius. He was intrigued with the fruit and wanted to see if it could grow in Great Britain's colder temperatures. Paxton filled a pit with plenty of water, rich loom soil, and well-rotted dung, with a temperature maintained between 18 Celsius and 30 Celsius. He named the fruit Musa Cavendishii after his employers, and in 1835 it finally flowered, producing a crop of bananas in the following May, one which won a medal at that year's Horticultural Society show. Duke William Cavendish was extremely impressed with the banana's taste, and he sent cases of bananas across the world, reaching Samoa first. Then the bananas would be transported to the South Sea Islands and then to the Canary Islands. After the Panama disease almost wiped out the Gros Michel banana in the 1950s, companies switched to the Cavendish. The Cavendish banana would continue to spread throughout the world with 55 million tons grown each year. The Cavendish banana is a relatively small accomplishment in both William and Joseph's life. In some articles, the Cavendish banana isn't even mentioned. William Cavendish, the sixth Duke of Devonshire, would have a normal political life as a Whig. In 1821, he carried the orb at George IV's coronation. In 1826, when Tsar Nicholas I of the Russian Empire had his coronation, William was appointed as an ambassador. In William's later years, he would write a book about the Chatworths and Harbrick Estates, which his writing was admired by Charles Dickens. For Joseph Paxton, he continued gardening at the Chatworth Estate. Paxton constructed the Great Stove Conservatory in 1841, the world's largest glass house, and in 1844, he built the Emperor Fountain, with the world's tallest water jet reaching 260 feet. Later, he would be awarded a knighthood. At the Chatworth Estate today, the banana tree still grows 30 to 100 Cavendish bananas each year. Thank you for reaching the end of this lesson. Claude's History Course teaches history buffs about important world history events. Become a patron and have your name listed at the end of each lesson. For more informational videos like these, subscribe and turn on the notification bell. 
Comment down below on which person or event you want to see covered next. We will see you on another lesson soon on Claude's History Course.